similar to what we saw yesterday. Uh, we were looking at that relationship that if um, the base raised to a power is a number, then we could write it in log form. Well, if our base is that number e that we talked about last week, um, that was another base. It looks like a variable, but remember it has a value that's about 2.718. Um, if x equals e to the y, then y is equal to the ln of x. The ln, the natural log, never has a base. You never write a base on the natural log. It's always a base of e. Okay? It is always a base of e. Um, this is the only base that we use the natural log with is if there's a base of e. If it's any other base, then we use the log, the common log. Okay? Um, so everything that we've talked about in the last couple of days also applies to the natural log. So uh, let's start with going from exponential form to logarithmic form. So if we have e squared is equal to x, if we write that in logarithmic form, the base is e, so we use the natural log. Um, just so you know, I usually use cursive letters because my L's and 1's look the same, so I write LN in cursive. Uh, that's just my own personal preference. Okay, just like we did with logarithms, the two numbers kind of switch places on the equal sign. Okay, so the X is going to be with the natural log, the 2 is going to be on the other side. Uh, we can check it using the swoop method. Okay, that I talk about. The base is understood to be e, so e squared is equal to x. Okay, um, we're good. e to the 0 is equal to 1. Remember I mentioned that property yesterday. Anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So in log form, that's the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. Remember I told you yesterday, any log of 1 is automatically equal to 0. That applies to the natural log as well. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, no, you should not go for room thirteen. Okay, uh, just using our calculator, making sure everybody knows where the button is. The natural log of e. Natural log is beside the number four, so the natural log of three is approximately 1.099. That is round to three digits after the decimal. I threw the next one in there just to make sure that we're not forgetting all the things that we've done so far. Log base 5 of 60. To do that in our calculator, that would be the log of 60 divided by the log of 5. We have to use the change of base. I'm not forgetting to close our parentheses. Okay, the log of 60, close parentheses, divided by the log of 5. And that is approximately 2.544. And then one more natural log, natural log of 10, we get 2.303. Let's look at our properties. Um, the natural log of 4, x squared y, we want to expand that. Okay, so we want to expand that. So right now, these are products. We are multiplying 4 times x squared times y. So we're looking at this property right here. So if we're trying to expand it, that means we're going to add them all together. So we've got the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of x squared, plus the natural log of y. And then the only other thing that we can do to simplify these is the one in the middle has an exponent. So we can use our power property. So the natural log of 4, we can't simplify that. We can bring that power down as a coefficient. So 2 natural log of x 
and then we can't do anything else to the natural log of y. Another example, natural log of 2e cubed. Okay, we are multiplying. It's not shown, but it's understood. So we've got the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of e cubed. We can't do anything to the natural log of 2. We can bring down that 3. And if we think about it, there is one more thing that we can do to simplify this. The natural log of e. Let's think about that for a second. Remember what logarithms mean. They mean your base raised to some power is equal to what's inside the logarithm. So the base is e. Well, e to the first power is e. So the natural log of e is equal to 1. So really... We've got the natural log of 2 plus 3. 3 times 1 is 3. And you can't combine the 2 and the 3 because the 2 is inside the logarithm. The 3 is outside the logarithm. So that's it. Natural log of 2 plus 3. That is fully simplified. One more, we had one like this yesterday. Natural log of e squared over x cubed to the fourth. We had a power outside of our parentheses. Remember what we did with that? We applied it to all the terms inside of our parentheses. And when we raise a power to a power, we multiply. So that's the natural log of e to the eighth over x to the 12th and then we're dividing so that's the natural log of e to the 8th minus the natural log of x squared or excuse me x to the 12th the natural log of e to the 8th is 8 based on what we just did in the last problem and then we bring that exponent that of 12 down as a coefficient. So 8 minus 12 natural log of x. You cannot combine the 8 and the 12 because the 12 is attached to the natural log. Okay, it's like 8 minus 12x. You can't do anything with that. It's got to stay. Okay, let's condense some. Put them together. 5 natural log of x minus 2 natural log of y, 5 natural log of x minus 2 natural log of y. Before we can combine them into a single logarithm, remember we have to move those coefficients and make them exponents. Natural log of x to the fifth minus the natural log of y squared. Then we're subtracting the two logs, so that becomes the log of the quotient. Okay, 3 natural log of A plus the natural log of B plus 7 natural log of C. Remember, we can do it with more than two terms, but same thing still applies. We have to move those coefficients. So the natural log of A cubed plus the natural log of B plus the natural log of C to the seventh. We're adding all those so we can multiply them inside of a single logarithm. Natural log of A cubed B C to the seventh. All right, so the first example we've got, natural log of 3x minus 5 is equal to the natural log of x plus 8. Just like with our exponential functions, when they had the same base, we set their exponents equal to each other. Just like with the log problems we looked at yesterday, as long as you have the same log on both sides, you set them equal to each other. 
same thing here. We've got the natural log on both sides. So we just set what's inside the natural log equal to what's on the inside of the other natural log. So 3x minus 5 is equal to x plus 8. It's just a simple linear equation. Subtract x from both sides. 2x minus 5 is equal to 8. Add 5 to both sides. 2x is equal to 13. Divide by 2. x is equal to 13 over 2. It's an equation. We should always check it. Plug it into the original. Natural log of 3 times 13 over 2 minus 5. The natural log of 13 over 2 plus 8. We get the exact same number for the left side and the right side, so 13 over 2 is our solution. Okay, example B, same thing here. We've got the natural log on both sides, so we just set what's inside the logarithm equal 2x squared minus x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 18. This is a quadratic equation. We've got x squared, so we want everything on one side. It's bigger. x squared is bigger on the right side, so I'm going to move everything to the right side. Subtract 2x squared from both sides. And I'm going to go ahead and add the x. Okay. Gone on the left side. 0 is equal to 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that factors into x plus 6 times x minus 3. So x equals negative 6 and positive 3. You should always check them, especially when they are quadratic equations, because sometimes one of them will be what we call extraneous, meaning you get it as an answer, but when you plug it back in, it doesn't work. Remember, anytime we square a negative number, you've got to put it in parentheses. Okay, so right now we're good. It didn't give us an error. Okay, we have the same thing for the left side and the right side. We're going to plug in negative 6. And... Um, let's do 3 just to be on the safe side. Because you never know when there might be a problem. But 3 checks out as well. Okay, so this one does have two solutions. Alright, so let's look at one where we do not have a log on both sides. 5 natural log of x minus 7 is equal to 10. Okay, we don't have the log on both sides, so we need to get everything on one side and graph it. So subtract 10 from both sides. We can't combine that with anything because we don't have just a plain constant to combine it with. That 5 is attached by multiplication. If it was 5 plus the natural log, then yes, we could subtract the 10 from it. But we can't do it. So we've just got a minus 10 stuck on the end. Like I said, this is going to be a lot easier to type into our calculator because we don't have to worry about change of base. We just type it in. 5 natural log of x minus 7 minus 10. Graph it. Oh, my window is probably not very good. Change standard. See where it crosses. Okay, it's over here on the right side, so let's adjust our window. We don't need negative x's, but I need more. I'm going to jump straight to 50 this time, just be on the safe side. Uh, negative 5 to 5, because I just need to zoom in on the x-axis. Okay, so 50 was more than I needed, but I wanted to make sure. Second count, 0. Move my cursor. 
Okay, the left side, throw the 